Hello everyone, this is Harry Gill. In this video, we are going to look into reiterant block. We have already seen how synchronized block works. If one thread acquires the log, the other threads cannot access the code written in the synchronized block and keeps waiting until the first thread has finished. Now let's say if we want the other thread to first check if it can acquire a log and if it cannot for now, we want it to do something else and then try again after some time. That way the thread 2 doesn't have to wait while thread 1 is executing the synchronized block. Also in the worst case scenario, what happens if thread 1 never releases the log for whatever reason? Thread 2 will wait there forever or any thread that is waiting to acquire the log will wait there forever. To address this problem, Concurrency API have a log framework where we can get more control on acquiring the log. And for that, we use log interface. Conceptually, it's similar to synchronization block. The only difference is instead of synchronizing on any object, we can only log on the object that implements the log interface. We can get the concrete implementation of log interface using the reiterant log class, which is also provided in the concurrency API. So the procedure is that we create an instance of reiterant class and then use the log method to get the log and then do the work that cannot be run in parallel. And when we are done with the work, we release the log using the unlock method. Note that releasing the log is very important. Otherwise, the other thread will not get the log forever. And also, we can only release the log that we have acquired. We will look at these examples as well. Now let's jump into IntelliJ. And instead of using synchronized block as we have done in the previous video, let's use the log framework. I'm going to create a new package called part 10. And I will copy the class from the previous part into this one and we'll just modify that. So for this example, I'm going to change the synchronized block and use the log framework. I will get an instance of log and now use the log method. In, and in finally block, I will release the log using the unlock method. Now let me save and run the program. And the output is still same. So I wasn't expecting any different output. So this is the way how we use log framework instead of synchronized blocks. While we're here, let's also see what happens if we do not unlock. So I will comment out that part and now save and run the program. And the program just prints one and hangs. And the reason for that is that when the thread one comes in, it gets the log it prints the value which we see on the console, but it never releases it and that thread finishes. And now the second thread or the all the other remaining threads, they are still waiting to get the log. But since thread one never released it, no other thread will get the log. So that's why we should always unlock if we have acquired a log in the log framework. Now you might ask, what is the benefit of using log framework over synchronized block? For that, let's look into the additional methods that we get if we use the log framework. This table lists four methods that we have access to in the log framework. The first two methods, log and unlock, we have already seen what it does. I would like to highlight that the log method is a blocking call, which means Whatever method is calling the lock method will actually block its execution until it acquires the lock, which is the very similar behavior to how synchronized blocks work. The benefit we get using the lock framework is the additional two methods in the framework. The third method, try lock, it requests a lock and returns immediately. The return value is true or false, and it will tell you whether the lock has been acquired or not. The fourth method is just another variant of the try log where we can try to get a log for a specified time period and it won't block forever like the lock method blocks. Let's jump in IntelliJ and see an example. For this example, 
I'll create a new class called trilog example and I'll create a main method and I'm going to create an additional method called acquire log which will take a log as a parameter and this method will simply get the log and release the log. Now in the main method I will create an instance of log and I'm going to create a new thread and the task that new thread will do is simply get a log and then release the log. It's not the main thread, it's an additional thread running in parallel to the main thread. And in the main method, I'm going to use the try log method to get the log. If I successfully get the log, the flow will come in the if condition here and I'll print log acquired by main thread. And once that's done, I will unlock it. And if the main thread is not able to acquire the log, then I'm going to print log cannot be acquired by main thread. Now let me save and run the program and see the output. Now in this case, the print is log cannot be acquired by the main thread. And the reason for that is when the main thread tried to acquire the log, when it said try log, at that time, the, the other thread that we created had that lock okay so the main thread did not wait to get the lock it just checked can i get the lock if it cannot it simply returns back with a false value now let's say if i just i'll just put a sleep in the main thread you could also use the other variant in the try lock where you could specify for if you want to wait for the lock for some time but i'm just putting a sleep and now when i rerun the program the main thread will be able to acquire the log because by that time, by, by two seconds, the, the additional thread that we created, it already acquired the log and released it. So now the main thread is, it will be able to acquire the log. Uh, now let me save and run the program again. And now as you see, we get the output of log acquired by main thread. Now another thing to note is, that we can only do a unlock if we have acquired a lock. To demonstrate that, let me do a little bit of cleanup because we don't need this code anymore. And now in the main thread, I'm creating an instance of a lock. Now note that I will not call the lock and let's try to call unlock in the main thread and see what happens. So I'm going to save and run the program. So the program throws an exception and the exception is illegal monitor state exception. And the reason for this exception is because we do not have the log and we are trying to release it. And also note that the log framework will keep the count of how many times have we locked. So in the next demonstration, I'm going to add an additional log in the main method. So I have locked two times and I will unlock only once. And now I'm going to spawn a new thread. And in that new thread, I will try to get the lock using try lock method. Now let me save and run the program. The program printed false. And the reason for that is the main method still has the lock. Now let me add another unlock method in the main method. And now let me save and run it. And now the output is true. That means the new thread that we spawn, that thread is able to get the lock because the main thread have already released the lock that it had. That is pretty much it that I wanted to explain. If you like the video, hit the like button and subscribe for my upcoming videos. I will see you in the next one.